Hi, I'm Paul Martin and I want to share with you today the work I've created from my experiences of visiting the prehistoric caves and the artwork there in the Dordogne in France. One of the main sites that people have heard of is Lascaux, which is a famous cave found in the 40s, um, which was severely damaged by the number of visitors going through and their breath actually started to create growths on the paintwork that started to destroy them. But you can still visit the reproduction um, cave that's there. It's one of the most visited sites in France, which is what I did, along with thousands of others, uh, as a starting point. And the work in there is actually really beautifully done and gives you a real sense of being in one of the caves. The first work I, I did in there was of the leaping cow, which is quite a famous uh, image. In photographs, it doesn't look very good. It looks badly drawn um, and because it looks twisted. When you're in the cave, what you realise is that the back edge of the cow is drawn on an undercut in the cliff and the front end of the cow is drawn on a fairly vertical piece. So it makes perfect sense when you're in that space. What I've added to it are these lovely little scooting set of horses across the bottom. I really love the little drawings of the horses in Lascaux. They are absolutely gorgeous. And I've put in a moon because the discovery of it, of those sorts of caves, happens just so rarely. And it is almost like once in a blue moon you see things like this. But maybe there was a lot of art around like this. There's still quite a bit to discover, I think. It also set me off in a different way of painting and I stopped actually using brushes on this painting and started using little bits of offcuts of mounting, stiff mounting card which you can cut to all different widths and shapes and sizes, dipped in the paint and dragged across that and a mixture of, of oil bars which is like uh, paint on a stick which you can then also scratch and draw lines with um, and, and, and makes a much bolder sort of image. As you go through the cave towards the end of your trip, uh, you come to the famous falling horse. And it's an upside down horse. That, that a lot of the animals in Lascaux are upside down, tipped up, painted across the ceiling. It's actually covered in images. But I've actually taken it and overlaid it with another set of images which you find, it, it, it's fairly rare to find them in caves. It's, it's only in Lascaux and a few others a sort of checkerboard pattern attached to cattle and certain sorts of animals within the cave. And so I've superimposed the falling horse, which you can see in a ghostly form there, um, over one of these sorts of sets of checkerboards. Um, I've put blue in, which they didn't have, but they did have purple. They actually managed to cook up um, the ochres to get a purple, which is quite staggering. And they had quite strong reds as well. So these images are quite vibrant and, and just amazing that they're 18,000 years old, the originals. I've moved over here to talk about the work created from my experiences of visiting Ruffignac Cave. Ruffignac is my favourite cave. It's a little bit up into the hills from the main run of the Vizere Valley where most of the other caves are found. Um, and it is a privately owned one. But it's an amazing experience to go in. It's a huge waterway and with a large cavern and you, they take you in via an electric miners train and it is a kilometer before you start to get the prehistoric art. And it was a kilometer for the prehistoric people to walk in as well because they came in, went in the same entrance. That is quite staggering. Um, as you go in through this long cave, trundling through the dark, gradually you're aware of some images drawn in the soft clay of the walls with three fingers. And this painting, Swimming Through Their Dreams, is just trying to get that sort of sense of these mammoths that have been drawn 14,000 years ago by a person like me by just waving their fingers into the soft clay surface, which I think is amazing that it's still there. And some of them were done with very small hands, so they were women and or children. 
My favourite bit of the cave, though, and the thing that gets me every time. Having trundled you back and forth on these little routes through the cave on this little train, they eventually tip you out to stumble on the uneven ground. And the lighting is very low. It's just offered up, powered by the train battery. That's it. And you get to the end and they put some lights on and they light a ceiling up and there's this 30 foot flat ceiling covered, absolutely covered in drawings of mammoths, bison, ibex, horses, in all different directions, all different sizes from full size horses to little tiny ones. Um, there's a, a rhino, a woolly rhino about a foot long. Um, it's just quite extraordinary. And every time I go in and see it, and I've been in a lot of times now, I just cry my eyes out. I look up and I cry. And the reason I cry is that about 14,000 years ago when these drawings were done, they saw things like I do now. As an artist, they were drawing and reproducing things in a way I would if I was trying to draw a horse or an ibex or a mammoth, or whatever. And it, it collapses time completely for me. Um, as, as you know, we think as modern people, we are so developed and advanced. And yet in art terms, therefore in perception and thinking terms, we're exactly the same as these people. I am in this modern Western world, draw like these people did. And that for me is just totally amazing. So I've created this kaleidoscope of bits of the creatures to try and give a sense of looking up into this sky of animals above. The last painting I want to talk about today is of Cat Blanc. Cat Blanc is just extraordinary. It's about a, a couple of miles outside of Les Eze, uh, in a lovely little valley, and there's a building across the cliff face. And when they let you in, what you get to see is a 30-foot carved frieze of horses, done something like 15,000 years ago by prehistoric people living in the valley, carved into the rock face with stone tools. Most of these horses are nearly life-sized, carved up to half a metre deep in relief and carved beautifully in a way that shows that the prehistoric people understood three dimensions. They understood overlapping, they understood making things smaller to appear go further away. Um, and it is just completely extraordinary. What really, really struck me about this is that you have these horses carved into the rock face, into the limestone there. And it was carved in a rock shelter, in effect, because prehistoric people lived under these overhanging cliffs, which is where the base of which this was carved. And there you have the valley, and past in the valley went the herds of horses. And I just think it's amazing that these little herds of horses, they would have seen these carvings. So you've got the, the carved herd and you've got the actual herd of horses. And if that isn't amazing environmental art, I don't know what is. I've painted this on, on board and using, again, card. Um, and you can see the sort of ridged verticals I've pulled across by using the edge of long pieces of card to create these sort of textures and shapes across the bottom. They also made lots of hand tools. They were prolific tool makers and they decorated so much of this. If you go into the Museum of Les Eze, uh, you get lots of um, propulsors or spear throwers, um, about 18 inches, two foot long. And the ends of these had little horses and bambies carved into them. So they were their working tools and hunting tools, but they actually made them and decorated them. Well, they didn't have television and radio and stuff like that in the evenings. And if they had six hours roughly per person to get all the things they needed to live, what else would you do? So they're the most exquisitely carved and decorated tools. Um, and this is a little cheap reproduction of a horse's head that I usually wear on my belt. If you've enjoyed my work today, please go to our website where you can find more of my work and also if you sign up 
any upcoming exhibitions?